As we come now to this last Sunday in the year for 2019, we're going to conclude a year-long not only celebration, but for those of you that have been here all year, you know every Sunday we preach from the book of Psalms. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said that like, oh yes. <laughs> this is the last one. <laughs> and how fitting the last one is going to be the last one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're going to take a break from the book of Psalms for a while. But today we conclude with Psalm 150. Psalm 150 verses 1 through 6. Psalm 150 verses 1 through 6. There you will find these words written. Those who are able, we ask that you would stand for the reading of God's holy word. Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. You can find the scripture on our screens. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tremble and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. God's word for God's people. It is blessed and may that a blessing to us all. Eternal God, our Father, again, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father God. We thank you for everything that has been said and done here in this place today. And we pray, Father God, that it was all pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And so, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray now that you would speak to us and speak to us in such a way, Lord, that we know that we have heard from you. And then as always, your man servant, I pray now that you would hide me behind the cross, that only you might be seen. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to my mind and speak through these lips of clay, that I might give your word as you have given it unto me. We ask all these things in Jesus' name we do pray. Let the church say, Amen. 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 May we sit in the presence of our Lord. Amen. For these moments that we have to share, church, I want to put a tag on this familiar text that says, it's time to get our praise on. Amen. It's time, 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 as we come to the conclusion of 2019 to get our praise on. As I just said, for those of you that have been here working with us all year long, you know that this year has been a year of praise and worship. Yes. Because this year has been a year of celebration for this church. But I hope somebody here also knows that this year of celebration has not been about us. This year has not been about all that we have done or about where we have brought ourselves from. But instead, this year of celebration, church, has been all about our God. You see, because some of us know that we never would have made it without the Lord being on our side. You see, but as I stand here today, I'm here to say that this church, Martin Street Baptist Church, is not the only one that should be praising God. But every person in here today ought to be praising God. Yes. You ought not be praising God because I said you should praise God, right. but you ought to be praising God because you know that God has been good to you. Yes. Come on, you see, Genesis yes. chapter 2 said that God formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. And the Bible says that when he formed Adam, the first thing that he did was breathe the breath of life into him. And science tells us that the first thing that a newborn baby does is inhale the breath of life. And every sense you have been born, every breath you have ever taken is the breath that God has breathed into you. And if God has breathed breath and life into you, the psalmist said you ought to have a praise on your lips. Yes. That's yes. why the psalmist said everything, everybody that has breath yes. ought to be praising the Lord. That's right. I guess some of y'all didn't catch that. Here's our end of the year chapter again. Let me see how many people are breathing in here. The psalmist said, everybody that has breath in your body ought to be praising God. Yes, yes. He didn't say some people. Thank he you. said everybody. Thank you. And when you praise God, you ought to praise him like you really mean it. Praise him like he's been good to you. Yes. You ought to praise God like it's the last breath you ever going to take. Yes. 
Nancy because this psalm, Psalm 150 Church, this is the last psalm. And some have called it the, the climax of the great doxology. There are other theologians that have called it the hallelujah chorus to the hymn, Hebrew hymn book. You see, because this psalm, church, it brings all the other psalms together. Right. Psalm 1 starts by saying, blessed is the man. But then Psalm 150 concludes by saying, the man ought to bless God. Yes. You see, this psalm is a psalm that everybody ought to be able to sing because this psalm, church, it springs forth like a fountain. It springs out in all directions. And it soars skyward to the ears of God. So it doesn't matter if you're an alto, a soprano, a tenor, a baritone, or a bass. When you hear this song being sung, you ought to lift your voice. You ought to join in the celebration, and you ought to give God some praise. Because the song has said, everybody that's breathing ought to be praising God. Yes. This song, church, you know when we were in school, they told you there are five questions that you always should ask. is the who, what, when, where, and why. You can ask all of that today. But this song does answer four questions that all of us ought to be interested in. Because the first question that this song answers is where we should praise God. There's a place that the praise of God should always take place. Because the song starts by saying, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. You see, that's the first answer to the first question because people from all over, from all kinds of walks of life, they gather and come to God's house. You see, when we come to God's house, we come from the suburbs and the city. We come married and single. We come light-skinned, dark-skinned. We come big, small, short, and tall. We come gay, straight, on the down low, on the don't know. We come rich, we come poor, we come educated and uneducated. All of us come and gather in God's house. And why? Because this is the one place where all of God's people are welcome to come. And what the psalmist is saying is when you come to God's house, not your house, but God's house, you ought to come here with your mind stayed on Jesus. Yes. You ought to come on one accord, and when you get here, you ought to give God praise. Yes. 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 See, it's one thing for you to praise God all by yourself. It's one thing to praise Him in your car or in, the, in your secrecy of your prayer closet, but when you come to God's house, He said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, yes. He said, look, I'm going to be there also. So the question we got to ask ourselves when we gather in the church is are we gathering in the church's name or are we gathering in Jesus' name? Because this is the Lord's house. And when his people come into his house, the psalmist said, you ought to give him praise. We are not need no worship leader to tell you to put your hands together and give the Lord a round clap of praise. You knew you was coming to church when you left home. And when you get into God's house, there ought to be a praise in the front and a praise in the back. There ought to be a praise on the right and a praise on the left. Everybody in here ought to have a praise in their mouth. Again, there ought to be a praise all over this sanctuary. If you wanted peace and quiet, you want to sit with your arms folded and your legs crossed, you should have stayed at home this morning. But when you got up this morning and made up in your mind you were coming to church, you should have said right then, I'm going to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. That's right. Yes. You could have stayed home if you wanted peace and quiet. The psalmist says, praise him in his sanctuary. The second question the psalmist asks for, answers for us is, why we should praise God? Verse 2 says, we ought to praise God for his mighty acts and praise him according to his excellent greatness. You see, the nation of Israel church, they had a first a front row seat to the greatness and the grandeur of our God. They were the recipients of some of God's mightiest acts. If you read the Bible, you will discover that when they were slaves in Egypt, that God had brought them out with a mighty and outstretched arm. When they came to the Red Sea, it was God that opened up and allowed them to cross over on dry land. When they were in the wilderness and they got hungry, God sent manna in the morning and quail in the evening. And when they came to the mighty walls of Jericho, it was God that brought those walls tumbling down. So if anybody knew about the greatness and the goodness of our God, they knew. Yes. Because year after year, church, whatever they needed, God just blessed them. Whatever, whenever they called, God answered them. Whenever they disobeyed, God forgave them. And because of all of this, the psalmist said to them, you ought to praise God for his mighty acts. Yes. 
In other words, he's saying, you ought to act like you know how good God's been to you. And because of all of this, church, what the psalmist is saying to some of us in here is every now and then, you ought to press rewind on the DVD screen of your life and think about what the Lord has brought you from. Think about what the Lord has done to you. And if the Lord has been good to you, you ought to bless him for his mighty hand. Come on, some of us know we ain't always had it this good. Come on, some of us know we didn't live in the neighborhoods we live in now. Some of us know we didn't always go to the schools that our kids go to now. Some of us know that God has been good to us. Yes, yes. If you come to God's house, the psalmist says you ought to act like what you know. Because if God has been good to you, I don't know if he's been good to anybody like he's been good to me, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord yes. and how good he's been to me, my soul cries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. The reason some of us ought to be praising God this morning is because some of us ought to be honest with ourselves and you don't have to tell everybody your business, but you know that God didn't meet you in church. Yes. Come on now, some of y'all know that y'all ain't been in church all your life. Some of y'all know that there was a time when you were a long way from the church. You know when God found you, you were in some place that you had no place being. You were doing some stuff that you had no business doing. And God could have left you where he found you. But God. But God. Yeah. Oh, somebody here you. knows. Thank God's been good to me. God been looking beyond my many faults and God been seeing my need. And because of how good God has been to me, I'm going to give him praise every chance I get. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, I try to tell folks all the time, if God ain't been good to you, that's between you and God. But yeah. God been too good to me to act like I don't know what God has done for me. Come on. I tell people all the time, look, if I want to tell you about God's mighty acts, I don't have to tell you what he did for Moses or what he did for Joseph. I don't have to tell you how he got the Hebrew boys out of that fiery furnace. I don't have to tell you how he brought Daniel out of that lion's den. Because all I got to tell you is what the Lord had done for me. Because I know yes. that God did some of his best work yes. while he was working on me. Come on, somebody. I don't have to tell you about no miracle. I don't have to read about no miracle because I am a miracle. I'm a living testimony. Why? Because I should have been dead and gone. But God, that's somebody's testimony in here. I should have been dead and gone. But God allowed me to live on. And because of that, I'm going to thank him and I'm going to praise him every chance I get. Again, I don't know what God's been to you in your life, but in my life, he's been more than a doctor. He's been more than a lawyer. He's been everything I've ever needed and oh so much more. He's been keeping clothes on my back. He's been putting food on my table. He's been keeping a roof over my head. Somebody here knows he's been my rock, my sword, and my shield. And he's been a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And he's never let me down. Because of how good God has been to me when I come into his house. I don't need nobody to tell me to give yeah. God some praise. I, I praise you because I know what the Lord has done for me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Sorry, I left my towel in my office. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we gonna make it. The third question that the psalmist asks for us is how, how we should praise God. Hmm. There's some folks in church that ain't gonna like this. But we gotta press on and press our case. That's right. Because you know there's some in church that'll tell you that it don't take all that noise. Oh yeah. You ain't got to do all of that to praise God. But I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad some folk didn't write the Bible. Amen. And God did. Amen. Because God said in his word, starting in verse 3, that we ought to praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp, praise him with the temple and dance, praise him with the string instruments and organ, praise him with the loud cymbal and the high cymbal. It sounds like God knew something about Psalm 100 when he said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Somebody here know that God don't like no quiet church. That's right. Come on. If it don't take all that for you, then that's between you and God. That's right. But some folks, when they come here, they want God to know, look, I'm up in here, Lord. Yeah. Amen. If you don't hear from nobody else, Lord, I want you to hear from me. Because I need something from you. Amen. I 
ain't here just playing church. I ain't here just because it's Sunday morning. But I'm here, Lord, because I need a breakthrough. And if I don't get it, I'm going to lose my mind. He's been in church. That's a reason you ain't never heard no church having a service up in the library. <laughs> Helping them. You heard them. They, they meet at the school. They meet down at the gym. They meet all over. But you ain't never heard the church having no service down at the library. Why? Do you know when you get to the library, you're supposed to be quiet? Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. And just like you know you're supposed to be quiet in a library, you know when you come to God's house, you're supposed to make some noise. You're supposed to give God some praise. You go to praise it with your hand, with your voice, with the instrument, whatever you got, just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yes. You get here, you're supposed to enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. You're supposed to thank him, and you're supposed to bless his holy name. All the psalmist is trying to say to some folks here is when you come to church, when you get in worship, listen now, don't be so cute that you can't clap your hands. Hey. Don't be so sophisticated that you can't shout. Don't be so holy that you can't say hallelujah. Yeah. You see, because God wants his people to make a joyful noise. God, God wants his people to praise his holy name. And again, you ought to praise him not because the preacher said you ought to praise him, but you ought to praise him because he's been good to you. That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, somebody. You ought to praise God. Because ain't nobody been as good to you as God has been to you. You ought to praise God because he's been answering your prayer. But you also ought to praise him because, listen, if you don't praise him, I know something that will. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Right. No, 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 no. The Bible says that the rock said no. that if you don't cry out, there's some rocks out there on Martin Street and on Harvest Street and on State Street that say that if you don't cry out in the sanctuary, they'll cry out for you. Amen. Like I said when the choir was singing, I don't need no rocks to praise God for me. Because I'm breathing and I'm living and I'm a testimony about how good God has been. Since I'm looking all around this church and I don't see no rocks sitting up in here, then somebody else ought to be praising God just as much as I'm praising God. Yes. Because even the rocks know that he is worthy yes. to be yes. praised. Yes. From the rising of the sun yes. to the going down of the yes. sea, yes. somebody in here knows that he is worthy. Yes, he's worthy to be praised. All right, all right. Again, if you need the rocks to cry out for you the next time before you come into church, stop and put a few in your pocket. <laughs> When they tell you to praise God, you just start throwing them in the air. Let them hit the ceiling. That'll be a joyful noise too. But I don't need no rocks no, no, no. to cry out for me. No, the psalmist said, let everything that have breath praise you the Lord. But as we take the final turn in this text, then we can go on home. The final question that the text answers is, who should be praising God? It's good to know where to praise God and why to praise God and how to praise God. Well, sometimes God got to step on your toe to make you say something. Come on now. Who should be praising God? Because we all know the final movement in verse 6 where it says, Let everything that have breath praise you the Lord. And if you wanted that the psalmist is talking about you, all you had to do was take a deep breath in. And then take a deep breath out. He's talking about you. All right, all right. And again, as I look around this church, I see some folks that are living, and I see a whole lot of you that's breathing. So again, you might not be able to sing, because I can't sing. Come on. You may not be able to stand up and run around this church, because I ain't going to run around this church. Come on now. You, you, you might not be able to do everything that everybody else can do, but all of us can do something. That's right, that's right. Come on somebody, I didn't see nobody get carried in here on a stretcher. I didn't see nobody get rolled in here on a hospital bed. That's right. Everybody had enough strength to come up in here on their own. So if you had enough strength to come in to God's presence, you ought to have enough strength to make a joyful noise unto yes. the Lord. Yes. And that's his holy name. You ain't got to stand up to give God praise. The good yeah. news is you can praise God while you're sitting down, laying down, or falling down. Because I heard it said that God will reach way, way down 
in order to pick you up. Yes, he will. I don't know about anybody else, but one of the best reasons you ought to praise God is I heard when the praises go up. Yes, yes. Oh, somebody knows that the blessings will come down. You're here today and you need God's blessings to start falling down on you and falling down on your family, your money, your job, your yes. health, and your church. Then now might be a good time to give God some praise. Yes. Don't, don't, don't wait to watch night. Don't wait till next Sunday because you may not make it to next Sunday. If you got a praise in your pocket, you need to put it out right now. <laughs> Sometimes we get yeah. caught up with our neighbor. Yeah. Sometimes you got to don't worry about your neighbor. Yes. Your neighbor might think that everything in their life is all right. They don't need nothing else from God. I'm, I'm good just the way things is. God already been good enough to me. I don't need no better blessings in 2020. But if you need God to do more, then you gotta give God more. If you want God to bless you more, you gotta bless him more. Yes. You gotta learn to praise God not only for what he has done, but praise God in anticipation yes. of the great things yes. that are yet to come. Yes. See, nobody else can praise God for you but you. Because yes. nobody else know all of your story but you. Amen. All we know is a little bit of your story that you want us to know, but there's some stuff that all of us that we don't testify about. There's some part of our story that don't nobody want to share with nobody because they don't. There's some stuff you've done that you don't want nobody else to know you've done it. Man. But God, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, yes. and they're always watching. Yes. And despite what God knows about you, God's still blessing you. Amen. Yes. Yes. Just because it's not what God knows about you. God woke you up this morning. God clothed you in your right mind. God allowed you to be in the service just one more time. And you mean somebody got to tell you to give God some praise? Oh. Praise God. I don't know about anybody else, but again, you don't have to tell me to give God some praise. Amen. Sometimes I, I, ain't, I ain't lying to you. Sometimes I just going down the road and I just think about some stuff. Yeah. Couldn't have been nobody but God. Yeah, I need to do like David and take a praise break and just give God yes. some praise. Yes, yes. Because God's been good to me. Some of us know some people that started out in 2019 that ain't here no more. But you still here. Yes, yes. Some folks that lost a job this year, but you still got a job. Some people lost their home this year, but you still got a home despite everything that this year threw at you. You're still here. Thank you. That's the reason for enough to give God praise. If you're leaving and you're breathing, you ought to give God praise. And I don't, y'all know I end every sermon the same way, so I'm going to trick y'all today. I'm going to end this one a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. but even, the, even the musician don't know what I'm going to do. We all know. And I'm not minimizing by saying we all know that Jesus died up on Calvary's cross. We all know that he went down into a borrowed tomb. We all know that he got up early that Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Yes. But we should also know that we ought to praise God yes, in this yes. situation. Yes. Praise Him every chance He gives. Yes. Yes. I don't know how many of y'all really truly want to come to praise God, but, but there's a song we used to sing when we were growing up that talked about, you know, I don't know where you come to do. Mm. Y'all, y'all know that song? Yeah. You just, y'all know that song? Now, I ain't going to sing it like they're supposed to be saying, but I can start it off. How many of y'all know that song? I don't know where you come to do. All right, then, if you came to praise the Lord, I want you to stand and sing with me now. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I come to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet. I come to lift my voice. I come to praise the Lord. 